Quad 101 here, and today's shout out goes to Jeff C. Jeff was first to say first on one of my recent videos, and thus was the shout out, so congratulations. Good morning, Quad 101 here with a review of a neat new plane, the Mini X320 Park Plane. Now, what is the X320 Park Plane? Well, if you look at it, it looks very similar to another aircraft that's already out there, another RC aircraft, the J11 which is a seaplane, a CRC airplane that you can take off from water. Now, this one does not make that claim in its ad, folks. Okay, so this only looks like that airplane, in other words. Um, I would not recommend trying that, especially if you add the optional LED bars to this, because uh, you might run into el electronic issues to do such. But for those of you, you know, and another reason I don't think this, that it's wise to try that is because these little 720 motors really should not have the oomph to overcome water drag and get you in, up into the air. I might be wrong. There's going to be people out there, I'm sure, that are going to try this in water, but I am not going to do, do that. <laughs> So let's talk more about this aircraft. Um, constructed of EPP foam, very uh, tough. Also has a collapsible front end for those nosing crashes for beginner pilots. But again, it's a two-channel aircraft uh, meant for beginner pilots to learn the basics of flight. Now, um, I do a lot of reviews of all types of aircraft, including beginners, especially beginners aircraft, folks. That's the, you know, what my channel is dedicated for it is to bring uh, our new people into the RC world, and that's. Two-channel aircrafts are a good air, airplane to learn to fly on. And why is that? Because you're learning the basics of throttle control using a two-channel aircraft and also um, maintaining orientation while you're turning. Okay, that's the hardest thing to do for most people when they're in, learning, uh, they're new to RC, is to be able to fly away from you. And then when you turn and fly back toward you, you get confused. These little two-channel airplanes are a great thing to learn uh, to maintain or learn how to maintain orientation on the airplane um, without getting into too much trouble because they fly slow enough and low enough that you know um, they're they're not going to really break very bad. They shouldn't break very very much if you crash them, and uh, if you do lose them, you know it's not a huge loss because they're usually very low price in a, to begin with. Okay, let's talk more about the aircraft again. Uh, it's a two-channel plane, which means. Uh, only left or right control and up or down throttle control. You give it more throttle, the aircraft will go up. You reduce the throttle, the aircraft will descend. And on the right stick here is your yaw control for turning the aircraft right or left. Now, the way this does this, the only controls this has, folks, is controlling of the motors, okay? Uh, to turn, you know, to climb, both of the motors are increasing their... Um, power on them, their RPMs, and causing the aircraft to rise and to descend, reduce, reduce throttle, and they turn slower, and then they descend. Now, to turn right or left, it's being that this does not have any other control surfaces other than these two motors, this uses differential thrust to turn right or left. So, like, to turn right, this motor is going to spin faster than the right motor, pushing the left wing to the right and the whole aircraft to the right, and to turn left, this motor will turn spin faster than that motor and push the aircraft to the left. So that's how it turns right or left. Additional things about this airplane, it is gyro stabilized, okay, to prevent the aircraft from rolling over or uh, flipping over uh, by, via the nose, okay. What that also means is you can't do acrobatics with this because this that the gyros will prevent you from doing loops or rolls. You're not going to be able to do rolls anyways with the differential thrust airplane. So, uh, but again, that makes it also makes it very easy to fly this aircraft with that gyro stabilization. To you know, to lessen the chance of you crashing because of beginner error on the on your controls. Okay, um, I talk, gave a little bit of brief on the controller real quick. Uh, the controller, you got an on-off button right there. You got throttle here, and you have right or left turning control here, yaw control, they call that here. This button here is for the LED lights, and let me talk about that too. This comes with optional, well, it's not optional, it comes in the package, but it's not installed. Uh, these two little LED light bars that you can install to the aircraft using these little tape, uh, pieces of tape that you get with this to tape these on to the bottom surface of the airplane if along the leading edge of both wings in case you want to do night flying. And the way to install this is you're going to need to poke a hole through the belly of the airplane to gain access to the power plug of this, which is in here. Let me show you this. We'll pull back this piece of tape here that's covering the flight control board with the gyros right here. And if you notice, 
there is one available plug right there for the LED bars. Okay, so you'd plug that in there after poking a hole through the belly right there, and then run this cable, this plug in through that hole and into that plug there, and then spread these apart. These two light, there's two light bars here. Spread them apart and run them along the leading edge of each one of these wings, and then tape them down. Uh, I'm not going to do that because that adds additional weight to the airplane and also additional power drain from the battery. So if you want a long flight, leave them off. Uh, but if you do intend to fly at night, you know, these LEDs are really hard to see in daylight, and I mostly fly in daylight. But if you do in would intend to fly at night, you do have the option of installing this uh, little LED bars to the leading edge of that. Okay, let's look again inside here. What we got here again, we have the flight control board and receiver right there under this tape. Again, with the little plug there for the optional LED if you wish to install them, along with the power plug. There is no on off switch on this aircraft. To turn on the aircraft, you have to plug in this battery, and it is a little 3.7 volt, 300 milliamp hour battery, very common battery. Um, this one is size 70, 20, 30 on the top there, if you can read that. I don't know if you can see that or not, but what that means is it's 7 millimeters thickness on the battery. That's 7.0, and 20 millimeters width, and the last 30 is 30 millimeters length. So for those of you who don't know what those numbers stamped on, that bat on these cheap generic batteries means, that's what they mean. <laughs> okay. Again, it's 300 milliamp per hour, very common. 3.7 volt battery and with that you get a battery charger for the airplane and a spare set of propellers and the other thing that comes in the box is the instruction manual now the instruction manual is in Chinese mainly uh, with English translation in these great areas here um, the translation actually is not too bad but it's kind of difficult for my eyes to read because the print is very small now it does not mention anything about these light bars and how to install them so again you're going to have to uh, figure that out for yourselves folks along with does not mention anything in here also by flying in the water so again I would be really hesitant to try to see if this actually flies in water uh, final things before we go out flying uh, the controller is supposedly gives you 100 meters range that's more than enough for this small aircraft um, you know you get out past 100 meters you're gonna have a hard time seeing it but uh, this orange should show up very nicely, I hope, at distance. So it shouldn't be too much of a problem at the outer edges of the range. And I think that is about it. So let's take this out into the field and see how it flies. Let me put the pop, pop the top back on. It snaps on like so. So hope you enjoy this flight. Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review flight of the X320. And now I hope everybody's practicing good social distancing today. That's what I'm doing. That's why I'm not at one of my local parks here. There's nobody out here today, folks. So, you know, nice place to go fly. Um, but keep in mind, you don't need as big an area as this to fly your X320. This is a park flyer. This should be good enough to fly in a local park and possibly even your own backyard. So let's see how this flies, folks. Now to get this started. Oh, one other thing. I forgot to mention this airplane only weighs uh, 49 grams with the battery included and what that means folks is that this does not require registration in most countries okay so keep that in mind you you're not going to be hassled by the authorities <laughs> flying this because this does not require registration in most countries okay the airplane is turned on now before I bind it I want to put it on the ground on a relatively flat level surface and that is to calibrate the gyros before turning on the transmitter and binding the transmitter by up-down movement of the controller. So we should be good to go. Checking the throttles. Throttles are working left to right. So we're good to go. Now, this does not have wheels. It only has a landing skid. So you're going to need to hand toss this. And the wind is coming from that direction, so I'm going to hand toss it that way. So giving it throttle and hand tossing. Ooh, interesting. Well, that should have climbed when I was giving it throttle, but it descended. And that means that tail needs to be, the tail on this, <laughs> the tail surface here needs to be bent up a little bit. I got a feeling, just a little bit. Let's see if that helps it some. And I'm going to give it more throttle this time when I throw it. Am I seeing any upward tilt on that? I believe so. So let's try it again. 
This time I'm going to give it full throttle, give it a good uh, blast. So. It's descending. So you really need to give uh, bend that tab, <laughs> that back uh, elevator up. And I'm going to have to do that at home, folks, and come back out of here again because you really want to use heat. Um, I'm really hesitant to bend it <laughs> using, you know, it says in the instructions to do such in case this doesn't fly level, but I'm really hesitant to bend foam. I don't like to do that without heat. But uh, as a last resort, we're out of here, so I'm going to do it. I'm just bending this up a little bit. Hoping that corrects that descending. Am I seeing any upward? I'm trying it again. I really don't like to do this without heat. But I got to do it because I don't want to come back out here <laughs> if I can avoid it. And I'm not seeing it bend up. Okay, that should be it. Let's give it another toss, going back over here. And hoping that that is enough. I bent it up just a little bit. Once it gets up to speed, I'm hoping that it'll maintain flight. One other thing I'm gonna try before we leave here is I'm gonna tilt this up a little bit and then turn the gyros on to see if that helps. So here we go again. There we go. That did it. <laughs> I bent it up. So never mind. We're, we're flying now, folks. Reducing throttle. Coming down. So keep in mind, you might have to do that. What I did there is bend up that elevator. Oh, man, it's... I'm at oh, one-third throttle and it's climbing because that elevator's too much, I guess. I gave it... <laughs> So let's reduce that throttle down even lower. It's climbing. I'm at one-fifth throttle. Maybe I'm in the thermal, to tell you the truth, because it's not coming down. <laughs> if this flies at that, little th at that low of a throttle, this will be a long, long time flyer. Let's bring it back over. It's still not coming down. It's Yeah, I think it is in thermal. I'm in that same area. I was flying the Z-53 recently, and there's that lip there, and the wind's coming from that direction again. So, yeah, it's slope soaring again, like the Z-53 was. Probably could bend that elevator down a bit now. Okay, let's give it a little throttle now because we are down lower. Uh, it's climbing again. I'm trying to bring it close. Low and, low and slow, but trying to stay close, trying to come down here, but I don't want to come down. I cut the throttle off completely. Oh, right, maybe I shouldn't have cut the throttle off completely because. Giving a throttle, it doesn't accelerate very fast. So, okay. Well, that elevator is a little bit too high up right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and because of that, we kept climbing. You know, climbing higher and higher out of here. Um, I'm not sure part of that might have been due to that we may have been slope soaring on that little bit of ridge lift there from that dirt. But I am going to lower this again. Bending it down a bit. And while we're over here, might as well just toss it because the wind's coming that direction. Go up, up. Now I lowered it. And it's flying real fast now because <laughs> I lowered that elevator. But it's climbing, reducing throttle. Still climbing, it's still slopes are in again. Going through the sun, I don't want to do that. Way up high, come down. Okay, coming down.
Okay, it does have proportional steering, so the gyros are working on this. I was just kind of surprised that I needed to lift up that elevator to get it in there. Trying to come back, increasing throttle slowly, gradually. Gradually increase throttle on this thing. Uh, but increasing th throttle, going up. Yeah, this is an oddball plane, isn't it? The oddball looking thing. Giving it more throttle to keep it in the air. Coming back our way. Now again, I tilted that elevator downward now. Now it's flying a lot faster, but you have to give it more throttle to keep it in the air as compared before. I was barely giving it any throttle and it was climbing. But it was flying very slow. But now this one's flying somewhat fast. I need a larger turning area. Let's see if I'm going to give it a hard rudder, hard rudder to bring it down, and then increasing speed, and it climbs again, bringing it over. And then hard yaw, it descends, so it goes down, and, and then it comes back up again as soon as you stop turning, <laughs> as expected. Let's try a figure eight going the other direction. It's an interesting plane. Now again, this is designed like the seaplane um, J11, but uh, it is not. Don't try, I don't think this would fly in water. There's just no way. It doesn't have the power to take off from the water, I don't think. All right, the other way. Easy to fly. Um, it does require a large turning radius, i got to say. Um, it doesn't have lower or high rate, so you, maybe you do need a, need a larger field. Uh, this would fly in a park, but uh, I don't think it'll fly in a backyard like the Z53 would do. Z53, I was just flying recently, two-channel, would turn very turn on a dime, but this, this is a much faster plane, <laughs> especially with that. Uh, well, I guess if you raise the elevator like I did it in that first part of the flight. You could fly it in smaller fields, but, in, but once you raise it down and, and fly at this speed, you're going to need a lot of field to fly it. I just got a text or an email. Easy to fly. My arm's getting tired. Proportional steering, so you don't need to bump it. That means the gyros are working on this. Coming around again. <laughs> and again, this is for learning, beginners to learn orientation. Coming toward you and then going away from you. That's hard for a lot of uh, beginner flyers to learn how to, you know, which way should I turn, right or left, when the plane's coming toward you or going away from you. Um, it just takes practice. Eventually it kicks in, folks. You know, you just do it enough and you don't, you end up where you're doing it without even thinking. And that's the idea between the, behind these two channel planes, why people fly them, is to learn that and learn throttle control also, where you just get enough throttle to that stay in the air. Fast plane, huh? <laughs> For a two channel. I'm reducing the throttle a little bit here. to the left okay trying to maintain altitude turn to the right trying to keep the sticks in the air so you can see it but this is really making my arm tired doing this <laughs> see how easy it is to fly it though all, all I'm doing is give it a right and left control if I want to bring it down I just turn make a hard turn and it comes down <laughs> at that throttle setting. Boom! <laughs> Came down too low that time. And that means my uh, battery's probably getting a little bit weak from the flying. What I'm going to do though, so we get a little more flight time, is bend that up again. 
so we can fly slower like we did there in the beginning. So let's try that. I'm sure there's no rattlesnakes out because it is rattlesnake season now. It's another reason I'm hesitant to come out here in the summer or in the warmer months, folks, because this is rattlesnake season. <laughs> Stay away from the bushes and you should be okay. Should be. <laughs> okay. Okay, I bent that up a little bit. Let's see if it helps. There we go. Flying slower now. Can reduce throttle a bit. So yeah, I bend that up or down to change the performance. If you're flying in a park, you want to have upward elevator, I guess, so you can fly slow like this. Coming around, trying to bring it down by turning. Going over the slope soaring bumps, increasing throttle because it was going down a bit there. So, coming around, and reducing throttle. I want to come down low and slow, but it, uh, this plane doesn't fly slow. <laughs> it's not too fast for beginners, but it's not too slow either. So, keep that in mind. And again, you probably want a bigger field than, than um, other park flyers because it is a zippy little bird for a two channel okay that throttle setting seems good well it's a beautiful day out of here in the desert how's the rest of the country folks those in the US Keep in mind, uh, my viewers are worldwide, so let's see here, coming around. Oh, my arm's getting tired <laughs> holding this up, but I want you to see the sticks. Oh, I turned too hard there and see it comes down, so you want to do gentle turns, gentle turns, folks. But uh, they're proportional, I'm still turning. So uh, before they put uh, gyros in these two channels, the other, the older two channels without gyros, you had to bump turn. That was, that meant you had to turn it like this, keep bumping until it would turn, or else the aircraft would wing over um, if you tried to do a proportional turn. This one don't. This one is proportional. I just give it a little constant turn. You can do constant turning. You couldn't do that with the older two channels because again they would wing over a lot of them a lot of them not all of them but most of them would <laughs> let's put it that way so, oh. okay well that's it it reaches the end of battery life and it glides in for a landing <laughs> the motor just stops so it has a low voltage cutoff as you saw there folks that's its flight time that's interesting, the low voltage cutoff. It just sh shuts itself off when it reaches that voltage, which is good. You want to protect your, your battery. So, let's go pick it up and give you my last final thoughts on it. Interesting airplane. Um, it flew a lot faster than I thought it would. Um, it requires, it does require a larger field than normal than, a, than other two channel planes of this size. Uh, because of, of its speed. Uh, you can slow it down though by raising or lowering this elevator. Here raises the elevator up by bending it up gently, gently bend it up and this will fly at a higher angle of attack and fly at a lower speed so you can fly in in smaller fields but then again you know uh, you you know if there's any wind flying at that speed you're not going to be able to control it. If it's a kind of a breezy day or wind picks up you want to fly at higher speeds bring that elevator down and but you'll be given a lot more throttle which means you'll be flying it for less flight time than you normally would if you were flying at slow speed so that's the x320 interesting airplane hope you enjoyed this flight this is quadcopter 101 signing out
Hi, Quadcopter101 here again. Hey, if you want to get your own shout out in one of my future videos, make sure you subscribe to my channel. It's real simple. Just go to my channel page and click on that subscribe. And also make sure to click that bell button right next to the subscribe button. That way you get notified when I release a brand new video immediately and give you a chance to get that first shout out. So give it a try, folks.